Yes, it's finally the um, the sun is finally starting to appear in in old uh, blighty as they as it's known. <laughs> cool. So it's starting <laughs> it's starting to warm up definitely. Uh, things in uh, in the wilderness of North America. Oh, uh, the wilderness is. Uh, it's good out here in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. It is uh, cool. In fact, we just had an earthquake here just a little while ago. Little little. 3.5 earthquake which is weird i have not Whoa. felt an earthquake in years and years but who knows maybe that's foreshadowing of things to come indeed yeah. any major structure damage nah, or just... no no it's three three point fives and nothing in fact in california yeah, they get you know fours and fives and nothing really happens so it's cool yeah, that's not bad not bad at all okay um so uh mark thanks very much obviously for um for coming back on for the third third installment this yeah. is the third installment right? it is the third installment yeah indeed yes um always a pl always a pleasure to have to have you on the broadcast Happy to be um here. we're gonna do in essence this is gonna be another sort of update catch up um what's going on because there's been a, a lot a lot place. has happened <laughs> yeah last time it's 2017 is just getting weirder and weirder and uh, i i'm i love being a part of it well, exactly, exactly. So we're going to get into it, the highs and lows. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think, we're, uh, Prime Minister, we're, we're going to stick, we're going to try and stick this one to 60 minutes, right? Yes, 60 minutes, just to have some sort of structure. Okay. So, Mark, uh, just before we start to uh, record, yeah. what what's some of the new thing? what's some of the information, the new information, just so we can kind of... No um, the the big information since I've talked to you last has been the mainstream media coverage of this. Yes, especially over mm -hmm. in the states, to where we're you know it's it's gone pretty much everywhere. Uh, you know it it really blew up at the first part of this year, and Neil deGrasse Tyson had nothing to do with it. He was kind of dragged mm -hmm. in. It was it was it was brought in, and I'll mention this during the show uh, with athletics, professional sports. That was that was the big yes. thing that kicked this thing off. Is it the NFL guy or was it was it NFL uh, and, or NBA uh, and and a little yes. bit of NFL, a little bit of wrestling. Uh, it's 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 fascinating. I seen Shaquille, Shaquille O'Neal. Was it Shaquille? Yeah. Oh yeah, yep, yep. We can talk about him too. <laughs> and, then, and then retracted it very quickly after. Well, five days later, and they made sure he retracted it publicly on a mainstream talk show. So that's mm -hmm. that's also interesting. Money. Yeah. Um, oh, I think the most recent thing that I, I can recall, which is very fresh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, um, is the footage on that. Is it the IS? Oh, the ISS, where the guy is passing the CGI nothing? Yeah. Oh, it's so horrible. <laughs> so embarrassing. And again, this is we'll, we'll talk about it, but it's why you don't do... I mean, you, you want to do live television, fine. You can do live television, but you can't do you can't risk it if you're going to do something like that. It's there's yeah. too many things can go wrong. So, opening yourself up. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I've got the full list of all the the videos that I've that I've made in the last I don't know, three months. And there's been I, I've made so much content in the last three months, and it was easy. It just wrote itself. Yeah, I've noticed every day I'm coming, I'm lo logging into subscriptions, and you're generally at the top with at least two or three yeah. <laughs> new videos. Yeah, I mean, it just just it just happens. People, there's so people send me so many things, and they're all legit, and it's all great stuff. So, I'm I'm working overtime. Excellent. Yeah. So, what are you up to now on the flat Earth clues? Oh, the clues. I mean, I, I haven't had time to really make new clues, but people haven't really been asking for them. The, the community itself has grown so large that at this point, uh, the, everybody, the, the amount of content that's being produced weekly by the community is, is way outscaling anything I can do. I mean, there's new players every single day. There's, a, I mean, so channels come in now, 100,000, 200,000 subscribers. I don't even blink anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. Another, another guy. That's great. Awesome. But but we can talk about. It. I mean, we, there was a, a channel that came in and sort of defended us. Did a parody video, had 19 million subscribers. I mean, that's more than. Wow. More. I know. I know. Look it up if you get a chance. The the channel's called, and I'm not being racist when I say this. It's N I G A H I G A. So nigga higa. Nigga what? I know, right? And it's a, it's an Asian kid. 
It's some. Um, is, is, is it legit views, though, Mark? You reckon it's legit views? He hasn't bought none of this stuff. That's oh, oh, you mean the night? No, no, no. He's not like he's not like PewDiePie. He's uh, yeah. he. This guy legitimately. I mean, he's got a good channel, and he's got 19 okay. million subscribers. And the video in what just a couple of weeks generated five million hits, which is awesome. So <laughs> I'm really I'm really excited. And, and yeah, that's just one of them. There's there's all sorts of people out there that are covering this. I mean, you can't. It's unavoidable now. It's it's part of the yeah, part of our vocabulary. It's, it's totally in your face, and and um, it, it's been helped along tremendously by um, the likes of uh, Alex Jones by having Eddie Bravo on. Oh, that, Joe, that Joe Rogan deleting and Rogan, of course. Oh, Rogan, he's he's very clever. He, he's he just keeps generating stuff. He made he dedicated yeah. finally dedicated a show against it yesterday. But I think secretly he knows, and he's just trying to stay in front of this thing. And he's doing very well. I mean, he's now in the top 10 videos, uh, Flat yeah. Earth videos in the search engine. Yes. And that's pretty good yes. for a guy that, that says he's not a Flat Earther. He's anti, he's a globalist. And yeah. it's, it's like almost he, got, he, he went into his house, went to sleep, and then woke <laughs> up a different person kind of thing because well, he yeah. was... Yeah. We didn't land on the moon, you know, with this whole you I think yourself or Eric Dubay's done like a video showing all of him before. Oh yeah. Saying, it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a video called the Joe Rogan Mystery, which shows that he was absolutely a conspiracy guy. And then he disappeared for a while and then when he came back, he had a brand new show on the sci fi network called Joe Rogan Questions Everything, but in the very first episode he recanted every bad thing he ever said about NASA. As like I've never seen a conspiracy guy do this ever, uh, ever. Mm. You only do that if somebody's got something on you. You know, they're they're threatening you or using leverage or they bought you, one of the two. And I, I can't blame him too much because Flat Earth hadn't come out yet. And now I think he's regretting it. Now he's like, ah, crap! I shouldn't have I shouldn't have caved in so quickly because this is. But he's helping us. Uh, I'll say this. Yes. He, he's helping us more. He's hurting us. He's generating his internet presence is monstrous. Despite the mm. fact that he, he doesn't do a lot of mainstream Hollywood stuff anymore, his internet pro, uh, presence is bigger than most celebrities. So good for him, and glad glad that he's on uh, sort of on our team. Okay, no problem. All right, then, Mark. Let's let's get let's get right back into this, man. Okay. So. Um... Okay, so we have Mark Sargent back for the third installment so uh before we get into it let me just introduce my co-host it's me the noble one shalom balance paradise assalamu alaikum hotep good day good night uh hola to all of the siblings out there um glad to be back I'm glad that mark Sargent has um blessed the platform again to trustfully incite and enlighten everybody again with this flat earth topic and update uh, i'm pretty i'm pretty sure prime minister you can concur with this that mark Sargent doesn't need to do an introduction I'm sure he doesn't does he <laughs> No, 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 let's I'm... let's let's get right to it. Uh, you know, if, anyway, this is this is interview. This is since I've talked to you guys last. This is now my when I post this, it'll be my hundred eighteenth interview since I started this thing. So yeah, no, you, we don't have to do an introduction. People know who I am at this point, I would think, right? Definitely. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, for the because uh, well, okay for people that don't know. Okay, I'll do the really quick one. You ready? Hi, I'm Mark Sargent, and I'm a flat earther. There you go. Because nowadays, people know what that is. That's the difference between then and now. Now, people, when they hear flat earth, at least they know the concept. Beforehand, it was like, what? Wait, they're not serious. It's like, oh, yeah, absolutely serious. But at least they know the concept. Right? Yes. <laughs> you're, I, I'm a flat earther. True. You're living in the super, super abbreviated version is you're living in a giant Truman show which is the 1998 movie starting Jim Carrey, which is uh, part planetarium, part terrarium, part Hollywood set, part sports stadium, part amusement park ride. T take your pick. It's all one of those things. You're in a big building. That's what you are. You know, you're, there's, there's no infinite space. There's no Pluto and Mars and Jupiter and all that. It's just something on the ceiling. And it's just a, it's part of a display system. 
and you're living in it and you were fooled like everybody else for your entire life. And it's funny you mention um the the true or because I actually watched it for only the second time in my in my life the other day. Yeah. As a, the first time I watched it was as a minor and now I've watched it as a senior. <laughs> See nice. what I mean? And um looked at it and I said to myself, Wow, this film, this film, this is crazy and it brought me back to say to myself, I remember Mark Sargent was talking that we are all living in this type of world. Yeah. And it was just crazy to think about it. So, Mark, anyway, let's get straight into it, man. Since the last time we have spoke to you, yeah, what's new? <laughs> let's get an update. Well, <laughs> there's a lot new. Thank you for asking. The uh, uh, there's there's a ton new. Uh, it it really, in fact, things were going along pretty well, and in the beginning of 2017, and I remember making a video a couple months ago, maybe pushing three months ago now where uh, a guy out in Los Angeles, California took a shovel and dressed himself up in like an orange, I don't know what you guys call him out there, like a safety vest and a hard hat and went up on a hillside in Riverside, California, which is part of Los Angeles. And he carved in the words, Google Flat Earth. And that alone would have been a great story, you know, and, and he got away with it, totally got away with it. In fact, he didn't even, he didn't even run away when the cops showed up. You know, he, he stayed there. And, and I still, to this day, don't know who did it. No one has laid claim to this. No one has taken taken responsibility for it. But then, right after that, I mean, literally within two days after that, oh, in fact, it, that'll kind of date it, uh, what we have here in the United States, you know, we have professional basketball. And during the winter, you know, mid-season break, we have the All-Star game where all the best players go to one city and they showcase their talents in kind of a mock game. It's not really serious. It's usually no defense. and Everybody just dunks on each other. And there was one of the best players in the NBA. His name is Kyrie Irving. He plays for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And if you don't know who that is, that's the people that currently have LeBron James. You know, LeBron, one of the most high-profile athletes in the world. And they, you know, they, they won the title last year. And so they're the current reigning champs, and, and he's on his way to the All-Star break, and he's on a podcast with one of his buddies, uh, Richard Jefferson, and they start talking about conspiracies and stuff like that, and Richard is an instigator in this case, and he baits him, and, he, and, and Kyrie says, oh yeah, the earth is flat, let me tell you about it. And he goes on for a while about he's absolutely convinced that the earth is flat, and NASA's been lying to us, and you can't trust any space pitchers, and so on and so on. And why this was a big deal this year was because athletes are notorious. I don't care what sport it is. They're notorious for giving really boring interviews. They are. They're, they're trained to say very politically correct things. You know, like, well, our offense was good and our defense was pretty good. And our, the other team, you know, deserves a lot of credit. And, you know, we gave it 110%, blah, blah, blah. So, and because of the internet, it's really changed. That podcast was already all over the internet by the time he landed. So you're, you're landing in a sea of media because all the reporters from all the major networks were there covering the All-Star game. It's just one of the things they do here. And all of a sudden you've got a player, current reigning champion, who says the earth is flat. Who do you think they're going to talk to? They're going to talk to this guy. And he did not back down. And they were grilling him for a while. And, you know, some of the some of the reporters were giving him a hard time saying, look, there are, you have millions of followers on Twitter and, and Facebook and stuff like that. You have a responsibility to your fans to tell people the truth, you know, the, to tell them not fringe theories. You know, you, you're going to influence these people. He wasn't backing down. And then other players like Draymond Green came on board. And then, I mean, I couldn't believe it, you know, which is why I included some of my Strange World episodes. LeBron James... He, he, he's on camera at the All-Star game asking Kyrie if the earth is flat. And Kyrie says yes. And LeBron says, yep, it's fine with me. It's like right on. LeBron James, we could, how much money would you have to pay LeBron James to endorse anything? And he yeah. did flat earth for free, basically. And it was, it was fantastic. Now, is LeBron James a flat earther? No, but he didn't shoot it down. And he's on camera saying it. Which is, which is great. I mean, and of course, in all fairness, you know, he did it because Kyrie won him the title last year with the last second heroics in the, in, the, in the finals. And then right after that, you know, again, that was on a weekend. 
And then the following Monday, you know, because all the sports programs usually have weekly shows, every, you know, you've heard of ESPN over there. I don't know if they have the ESPN in London, but they, yeah. all the major, gotta, all the major ESPN shows covered it. And I'm just looking at them, Sports Nation, The Jump, First Take, 120 Sports, TMZ covered it, Sports Illustrated covered it. If it was a sports station, they covered it. And then it started going into ESPN Radio, Mike and Mike, uh, Fox Dishnet. And I'm just looking at all the videos. I mean, people were just sending me. It's like, dude, they were talking about it. They're talking about it. Uh, it was on the Bill Maher show. And then comedy shows started picking up on it. Uh, Bill Maher was on a, on a panel. And, and everyone's, they don't know what to do with it. They, they, they had no idea. It's like, okay. Because remember, this was, this is not the first time a celebrity has talked about it. It was... You had B.O.B., you know, uh, a Grammy-nominated rapper over here, and he 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 talked about it a little bit. Tila Tequila, eh, you know, kind of a reality star. But hey, but Mark, yeah, with the um the B.O.B., he he made the tracks. He he made up, I think one or two tracks about it, and then he he did some interviews. Well, I've watched a few of the interviews, and he doesn't really seem to have grasped fully no, the information. No, he, he does. He just can't relay it. He did. He did the interview on Hot ninety seven FM where they recorded the video part, and that was like one of the first interviews he's done since releasing the song Flatline, which used a sound bite from Neil deGrasse Tyson and, and tore him apart. And look, I, I, I'm not shy about saying it. Bob does not interview well. Uh, the man is not quick on the. I mean, he does. A good, he throws down a mean rap. I, I'm picking up what he's putting down there. But when it comes mm -hmm. to interviewing, ooh. Uh, to the point where uh, Jaron from Jaronism contacted him and said, look, dude, if you need backup on this stuff, <laughs> let us know. Seriously, <laughs> we are here for you. Don't go, you know, don't start, so, uh, don't start uh, swinging around without a net because you need, you need a little help. And he was being nice, I'm sure. Because Jaron yeah. has, has been in touch with B.O.B. over the last, uh, at least a year and a half. So... Then it's again, so yeah, so then it starts filtering down into the to the mainstream media, and there's all sorts of different shows. I'm just panning up, and uh, there's Richard Jefferson on Fox Sports, and about that same time, and don't let me let me forget, uh, SpaceX also announced about that time that they're going to try to send tourists around the moon, two tourists around the moon uh, next year. They're not going to land on it, but they're actually going to fly out to the moon and back. That, that's that's never ever going to happen so it's <laughs> so as it was going to howard stern talked about it uh and then i'm looking at the channels i'm trying to figure out when Shaq got involved Shaq got involved okay then Kyrie got did a follow-up interview and then mainstream media oh the the guy from the 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 best picture picture director from the academy awards this year over in the states barry jenkins he mentions flat earth for some reason in an interview outside the academy awards and then as it's slowly starting to filter out of mainstream media, in comes Shaquille O'Neal. And wow, you thought it got nutty before. The Shaquille O'Neal thing got super nutty because Shaquille O'Neal, I mean, as, as good as Kyrie is, Shaquille O'Neal has won multiple titles. He's Hall of Fame. He's a living legend. You know, he's considered arguably one of the best big men in basketball. And he's known everywhere. You know, when you're seven foot everything and, you know, you're a monster of a man and he li he loved to travel, everybody talked to this guy. You know, you don't even have to call him by his full name. Everybody knows who Shaq is. It's just, and he brings it up during one of his podcasts after a game. And it was really blatant where he go because he basically was backing Kyrie. And if you listen to some of the All-Star Game stuff, which was three weeks earlier, he was backing Kyrie even then because Kyrie was in the three-point competition. And then he got, you know, and somebody said, well, you know, there was flat and, and, she, and, she, and she killed, you, you could listen to it. But he's going back and forth with his co-host saying it's absolutely is flat. And he stuck to that for a while. But you got to remember, Shaquille O'Neal is different. You know, uh, Kyrie, yeah, fine. You know, he's current athlete and he's young. But Shaquille O'Neal, he makes $20 million a year in endorsements, even now. He can endorse anything he wants. 
And it only takes one of those corporations to call up his agent and say, you know, you might want to back down on this. But what are you going to do? You're going to back down on a podcast? No, we need, we need something more uh, high profile. So they put him on Jimmy Kimmel. And Jimmy Kimmel's literally his opening question in the first five seconds was, so you were kidding about Flat Earth, right? You know, and, and, you know, it was so scripted, it was unbelievable. But Shaquille still didn't, you know, wasn't... <clears throat> wasn't condemning flat earth but he was backing down you know as politely as he could and then i started seeing celebrities you know like and just before that one of the one of the guests on jimmy kimmel was dave Chappelle. i'm, I'm watching a commercial or, in fact i was reading an article this is, talk about how weird flat earth has gotten i'm reading an article in rolling stone magazine about dave Chappelle and jimmy kimmel talking about flat earth on the show it's like, how is this even, you know, th that's when things start getting really sur surreal for us. And then, let's see, then the convention is announced, right, you know, right around that time. Uh, and it wasn't planned, you know, as far as the timing it had nothing to do with, with anything, you know, as far as uh, mainstream breakout. But the convention was announced where uh, there's going to be a Flat Earth International Conference in Raleigh, North Carolina, in the United States here in the fall. Second week of what November. Month what month are we talking now? No, um, November, November, November 9th and 10th in Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, sorry, Carolina. Not, not the actual event itself, but when did you actually start to talk? Um, when, did, when was the event actually Oh, um, oh the, the event announced. was planned. Well, it was announced here. I'm going to see. I'm going to pull up the conference. Uh, Hang on here. The conference was announced. Oh, crap. The first promo... Oh, wow, this was, that was promo seven. Oh, I'm sorry, promo. Uh, it was announced about just... two, two two months ago. It was announced. Sorry, by pro okay. I was on. Pro I was. I, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I was on promo seven by the time the uh, by the time Shaq backpedaled. So it would have only been about. It would have been about a couple weeks before Shaq did his thing. Was when the when the conference was announced. So right. it was after the Kyrie thing started, but before Shaq, because I was, I was literally, because I, I do a promo every Saturday and I was on promo seven by the time Shaq backpedaled and Shaq backpedaled, uh, five days after he announced it. So yeah, even more than that, maybe five weeks before Shaq came out <clears throat> was when the, when the conference was announced and I was invited to it, and I, as far as I'm going to be a keynote speaker on the first luncheon, and I'm going to do the final day, the award show on on the second night with Patricia Steer, and that's going to be a lot of fun. And the and the VIP tickets for that thing sold out in a week, which was yes, which was, I did hear, which was <clears throat> great. I mean, general admission is still out there, and and I'm sure they'll sell more VIP tickets. And anyone that's doing press, I'm sure gets in free, but it's going to be. It's going to be amazing. I, I can't wait. So everyone's so excited to do it because I've already done social events where you're in the same room with a whole bunch of other, you know, people that share your beliefs, you know, especially in Flat Earth. Yeah. And it's just infectious. It's it's just great. Can you imagine getting hundreds of us together in a... But it's, yeah. It sounds excellent. It really does sound good. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's an excellent segue. I mean, does this, does this mean or would this denote that um, some of the potential division that has been within the, the, the flat earth community is going to be kind of ironed out of sorts or some of the well, people it, it, have it'll work to... itself. I mean, well, first off, it's still seven months away, so it's a long time from now. Uh, you know, it's, it's literally, it's almost the end of the year in 2017 before, before this thing happens. So anything can happen between now and then, but I can tell you that some of the division has already started to melt away. Uh, and the community has bonded on a lot of certain issues. The, of course, the, again, there's going to be a dissension no matter what. There's always going to be drama. I mean, every television show out there, I don't care if it's reality or not, people don't watch it unless there's drama in it. And, you know, every group has some, some sort of drama built in. Some of the drama is already taking care of itself. Like, for example, um, Eric Dubay was invited. He politely declined, and then he not so politely trashed the conference during his interview with oh, Eddie Bra during his interview with Eddie Bravo which was not good uh, Matt Boyland was also asked and he declined uh, for reasons that we still can't figure out because he tends to ramble 
and okay. but those are the only two guys that that declined. Everybody else is is going to be going. Nobody, literally, nobody else turned down the the invitation. You guys can check out the roster yourself. Now, will that roster will the roster change between now and then? Well, it's got a good shot. Mm. I mean, I mean, who knows what will happen between now and then? Some people may drop out. Other may, people may fill in. No different than any um, uh, uh, like if you do like a multi artist concert. You know, sometimes yeah. people people drop out and then people come back in. She happens, as they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun, and the the community I think is it is going to it's going to be one of our critical mass moments. If it doesn't happen before then, because if the the media has to respond to it in some ways, science would be really regretful if they did not make some sort of statement there and if that means they have to they have to get people from the local universities to come out and picket it but if i was if i was any talk show i don't care who it is i would send a team out there just to see what's going on i'm not saying you'd send bill nye or neil degrasse tyson or anybody like that but you you want to send some people there because this because a lot of people will see this as an anti-science convention and that's not true but at the same time, how can we prove that it's not? You know, we're, we still go after, you know, science is an enemy in, in some of the flatter circles. I, I personally don't hate science. Uh, the, what, light bulbs, f wonderful. Uh, air conditioning, super great. Microwave ovens, hey, convenient. Uh, but science does make some mistakes and they make leaps of faith that they probably shouldn't, especially, especially when it comes to the world. So we're, we're, not, we're not there to trash science. It's gonna be a real positive thing. And I mean, the fact that we have a video award show at the end of it, that, that should tell you what, what sort of attitude we have. So. Excellent. And are you, are you in a better place now with, um, with that you and you, you and Eric or? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Eric, Eric wrote it. For, no. And in fact, the opposite, Eric pretty much wrote everybody off and, and Eric, Eric Dubay, oh, I gave him, in fact, I officially wrote him off right after he did it. He had the pleasure, I mean, the privilege of being on a podcast. It was the closest thing to mainstream that anyone in Flat Earth has done, other than, say, Dave Murphy over in Macedonia, where he goes on the Eddie Bravo podcast. Eddie Bravo actually went and did a dedicated podcast just for him. Yeah, I, I listened to it. And, and, he, and he promoted it when, you know, he was hyping it up because Eddie Bravo is also friends with Alex Jones. And, and of course, you know, you've, you've probably heard the Alex Jones rumor, and it's not a rumor, you know, Alex Jones came out when he was trying to get custody of his three children, and he stated in court that yes, everything he's done so far has been an act. And his whole persona is a character that he, that he plays no different than any actor. And his, and his, you know, this is in a certificate you can frame, which is fine. I, I, I gotta jump in there quickly, because you don't think Alex Jones just said that to be able to get the custody? No, 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 I don't. <laughs> because, oh, I mean, yeah, is he is he a little is he a little twitchy? Sure, but it doesn't matter if he said if he said it in jest or not. You put something like that in a notarized document. I mean, to the point where your lawyer is actually reading the words to a judge. Look, it's gonna hurt you credibility wise from a from a conspiracy side of things it's there's nothing you can do because you're going to have people say look you told people it's not like it's not like somebody ran into him in a bar and and they just overheard him saying this or had it on audio or something like this this is a court document you you can't get more serious than this and and of course it it, it makes sense because when the chips are down you see what people are about and he had to make a choice between his viewers that's my argument to you, which is, uh, and I, I'm sorry if you're an Alex Jones fan, but he had to choose between his viewers and his kids. You know, what, you know, not not that his kids were going to die or anything, but he wanted sole custody of them. And, and you know, b bad things happen during divorces anyway, and people people make wrong decisions. But he made the choice, and he's gonna it's gonna hurt him in the long run for it. He they tried to bury the story as much they could, but it like, look, it got out. Anyway, th it's not the point. The point is is that. Eddie, Eddie Bravo goes on the Alex Jones show and, and Alex Jones, uh, one of his producers contacted me, oh geez, last, at least 15 months ago now. And they were trying to, this will kind of give you an idea if I didn't already tell you, they wanted to do a flat earth show. 
Yeah. And they were trying to figure out how you could do a flat earth show without using the words flat earth. <laughs> and I said, it'd be a really short show. You, you'd, you'd only be able to go about 10 minutes. You could dance around it for a while, but sooner or later, you're going to have to say the words. And then they realized they, they just couldn't do it. And he has been back. He's, he has never endorsed flat earth to the point where when Eddie Bravo came down, they did three different segments with him. One was in a restaurant, one with it was his co-host, and one was with Alex. The one with his with, that was at the restaurant, they live streamed it. They let him talk about Flat Earth for a couple hours at this restaurant with drinks. They put it on Alex's channel, then they pulled it. The, with his co-host, they put it on Alex's channel, they pulled it. And when he was with Alex, he was not allowed to talk about Flat Earth at all. So... Eddie decides to go on his own. This is kind of a long version of the Eric Dubay thing. Eddie decides to go on his own and do a podcast with Eric and, you know, bring in Eric from Thailand. And the, the audio connection was terrible for a while. And well, I, I told people, I go, because people are saying, will Eric behave himself? Because it looked like Eric was going to be fine. He endorsed the conference. He, he was he was fine with it. And he started to join a few hangouts, and, you know, usually with people over on your side, neck of the woods. And, and, and the people ask me, they go, is Eric going to be fine? And I go, if it's 90 minutes or less, he'll be fine. If it goes more than that, I don't think he's going to be able to hold it together. And I was absolutely right. <laughs> the thing ran three hours. And after that 90 minutes was up, Eric figured, what has he got to lose? It's like, oh, I'm in mainstream now. I'm just going to start torching people. And he, he there was a point where and you can you can look this up the video is out there uh where eddie asked him you know are there shills in the flat earth movement would you like to call them out you know the the, the people that you don't trust and eric didn't say anything and 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 eddie was saying okay well maybe for legal reasons you can't say that he goes okay just tell me the the people you endorse you know the friend you know people that that eric can recommend that was the real telling thing he he, he couldn't he couldn't he couldn't recommend anybody and i was like okay i see what it, you know he, he's his own island which is fine he's not coming to the conference because he's trashed people so much he's still got an enemies list on his on his website which is fine you have an enemies list and i'm at the top of it even though i've never done anything to him but it's, it's why why where's this hate coming from you're a yoga instructor for god's <laughs> sakes you're a buddhist as far as i can tell anyway no. Anyway, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. So that's yeah. So Eric and I, we've, we he is one of the few people in flat Earth I have never spoken to. I've even spoken to Matt, and I've never never spoken to Eric. He it was the literally the only flat earther that went through the channels in the first two years that Patricia never interviewed. Even that he was he's been offered so much stuff and he trashed the conference. So now pretty much everybody's done with him. It's like okay, fine, stay in Thailand. We don't care whatever you do where you're not going to make it to the to where this thing's going and you can make videos all you want it's just not going to go anywhere i i don't know why he is so resistant to working with anybody he he just made he, he did it to himself like why make enemies it's a it's a friendly community so hopefully that answers that that's all i got on eric Guys, yeah, that's fine that's that good. answers that answers it that most definitely answers it mark um, <laughs> okay <laughs> it's a pity. I mean, he does present um, oh, got... very similar information to a point, but there are there clearly are differences in regards to the the, the potential structure, infinite planes, etc. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not com I'm not complaining about the info he put out. In fact, the only beef I ever had with his content was if you're gonna talk about flat Earth, keep it flat Earth. Don't attack any demographics. Don't go after any one demographic group it'd be like me going after the dutch you know me dedicating entire videos saying i hate the dutch i think they're horrible people and they should be wiped out it doesn't make any sense why you know flat earth is a community uh, it, it it encompasses everything and it's a family all, all one world family and you can't do that and also say oh yeah and we should kill all the ukrainians what, 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 how, how do you pull in both those off in the same in the same channel? It, it can't be done. Don't make sense at all. It don't make sense. But what I've noticed is that 
a lot of different celebrities come out every every once in a while and make these make make these statements about flat earth and then the internet goes crazy and then a few days later it all disappears a few mm-hmm. days later like things that if they don't retract it which many of them have done yeah um they they they're made to be it's made to be like a joke by these mainstream media outlets like when Shaquille O'Neal recently come out and said, yeah, the earth's flat or whatnot. They made it almost a joke. I'm sure he got that donkey of the day on Breakfast Club and things like that. So why do you think that they're so dismissive? And then there's some great questions. I mean, um, let me just shout out this Instagram account. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a flat earth Instagram account actually. And um, he poses some great questions on that account. And sometimes I wonder to myself, why don't no one answer these questions that he says? So. It's kind of a two a two part question really. Um, all right, what the what the what the Instagram account's called is um, flat earth, t shirt cold. Do you know those guys? Uh, no, but it's okay. Keep going. Okay, so the first part of my question is why do you think that they're so quick to uh to shut down any time that these celebrities seem to become flat earthers? Because it's 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 part of the it's part of the grand design. Two steps forward, one step back. The mainstream media cannot just give Flat Earth a big hug. They have to treat it very delicately, like it was radioactive. Because the the, the average person on the street, you know, there's still... I mean, yeah, there are a lot of Flat Earthers. I mean, there's probably millions at this point of Flat Earthers out there. Most of them closet Flat Earthers because, you know, they don't want to look like they're insane in front of their family. But they have to. Re- you have to respect the bulk of your audience. You know, the same reason why Alex Jones wouldn't do a Flat Earth show. You know, they, they were scared. I have talked to many podcasts, not you guys, of course, many podcasts and shows that said, look, I'm really nervous about doing a show like this because I'm afraid of the backlash. You know, you're afraid that people will just tune, turn you off because you're even talking about it. I've seen it time and time again in chat where people say, I'm never going to listen to you again because you're even addressing the topic. The topic is so ridiculous, so they have to come at it sideways. In some ways, it's good the media is doing that. If if the media is making fun of it, we and we don't care. You know the old saying, which is the the any publicity is good publicity, or even bad publicity is good publicity. At least it's out there. If you're talking about it, whether you're making fun of it or not, it still helps us, because at the very least, there's people out there. Yeah, the, there may be five people sitting on the couch and four of them are laughing at it, but one of them be going, you know what, I'm going to look this up after this show's over and, and see what this thing's about and see why people are even thinking this, which is why it was great for Shaquille to, came, to come out because then I was watching mainstream media people, especially in the sports world, were saying the same thing. Uh, there's an old military saying, which is one time is happenstance, second time is coincidence, the third time is enemy action. When Shaquille came out, I was literally watching watching sports shows saying, okay, why is this a thing? Why are, you know, it, it, it's not, you know, kind of like the old saying, it's not funny anymore. It wasn't funny anymore. You know, it was Shaquille. If, it's, if, if one person tries to do it as a joke, as a lark, that's, that's one thing. But if other people are doing it, why, you know, if it wasn't that funny a joke to begin with, why are you still pushing it? And so I think mainstream media is doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing which is they're they're introducing it to the population the term to the population in a way that doesn't jar people into throwing themselves off of a building because remember there's some people out there and i've i predicted this a while ago there's going to be a percentage of the population if this gets any more serious they're not going to know what to do with it they you know they may have some sort of mental breakdown because you know, no, no different than you remember when Truman in the Truman Show, when he, that moment, most people forget when he got to the sailboat, when he got to the edge, he was beating on the wall and crying for quite a while, because he realized then that the world wasn't what he thought it was, and that he had been living in a deception, to li- living in a lie for, you know, all his entire life, and so you got to be, up. yeah, he woke up, and you got to be delicate. Well, you know, there's some people that can handle it real well. I mean, conspiracy people, if you're into that world, it's easier for us because we didn't trust it to begin with. But a lot of people out there, you know, they, they don't know, you don't know what their reaction is going to be. So 
with social media now that that's in place you can kind of get the feel for it you can you can you can monitor social media you know twitter and instagram and uh facebook and whatever else they're they're using out there and and seeing what what people are doing you know they can monitor the forums and seeing what the reaction is and the saturation level now that it's getting is is beyond the pale it's it's getting way way up there to where you know yeah the shaquille thing died down sure but it took him five days there was no accident there he could have retracted that thing in 10 seconds right after the the podcast was you know gotten to a point but he didn't and then by that time you know people had all, hadn't forgotten the Kyrie thing and now we're to a point where you, people aren't shy about talking about it oh yeah it still is mocked but it is not blown off to where people saying i'm not going to talk about it anymore now they're talking about it and that falls into the line of um that thing they say where you have any massive change any new thought paradigm it's first off it's ignored second time it's hotly debated and then the third time it's accepted and th we're in the hotly debated time right now i mean it's gotten it's gotten just crazy i mean it, to where there's there's all sorts of people that are they're doing shows against it and that's that's even more fun to watch it's like yeah bring it bring it bring me all your subscribers and and try to try to debate it because you can't you know if this thing if this thing could have been shot down it would have been done last year or the year before it would have been done and after i made the clues the clues are still out there nobody's nobody's called me and said oh yeah here's the reason why your clues don't work <laughs> seriously it should have happened why yeah, why don't why right. hasn't an astrophysicist even anonymously written me and said that here you, your math is wrong oh that's another thing i got into a debate with a guy who was um who had a master's in mathematics and he thought for sure you know that's that's another group that's gonna have a really tough time anybody with a master's degree in any physical science or mathematics there's nothing you can do for him the, the conditioning's too far and he's going oh no math math is the answer math will shut down flat earth i'm going dude that is the exact opposite of what's true because most people don't know math and when you're when you're talking math to them if science this is a word to science out there you think you can break this sucker down with math all the people are going to hear the lowest common denominator you me people on the street all we're going to hear is static when you're talking math you give equations it's like dude i didn't pay attention to high school in the math class i hear nothing when you're talking literally you might as well be a staticky television sound sorry i go off on little rants <laughs> what else what else you got www.thehatman.com to purchase an Express Truth t-shirt. Did we already go an hour? No, no, we haven't gotten into the hour. That's just automatic. That's automatic around these parts. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I thought we were like, I thought we were fading to commercial. It's like, okay, good night, everybody. What, uh, what else? What else you got? Okay, uh, my, the second part of my question was um, these questions that there's some great questions, like I said, that Instagram account that that I happen to follow, and um, you know I I just like to see what said and none of these questions ever get answered. What? What do you got? Ask me. All right. Basically, um, I mean, this question is something that we'd have to <laughs> we would have to be asked to NASA. I mean, oh, okay. Well, well, I'll try. I'll try to put myself in NASA's shoes. I can do that. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. So basically, what 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 they're saying is, within 2017, yeah. Why do we not have a four to eight k image of the world rotating? Oh, NASA's excuse there. Well, they. Ooh, that's a tough one for NASA. They would probably go the lines of, well, it wasn't high on our priority list why in fact i had a guy tell me the other day it's like why do we even need pictures from space <laughs> he literally said that i go well because isn't that what nasa loves to do isn't that what nerds and geeks they love is they love these sciencey things uh the the pictures of the earth from space they yeah nasa would say it was probably wasn't high on their priority list because you got to remember before the summer of 2015 there was almost nothing literally almost nothing out there when it came to space pictures and then as our community started asking for it, voila, out of nowhere, the Himawara Japanese satellite supposedly came online and that, that satellite from 
the, the it's be, ha, a million miles away that shows the moon transiting in front of it and another you know a couple still shots and i what i try to tell nasa is i'm going look that's the angry wife syndrome you know the, the, that's you're saying what's the angry wife syndrome well a, a husband comes home and and the wife says you know what i'm divorcing you you it's been freaking 40 years and you never brought me a freaking oh you bought me brought me one bouquet of flowers in 40 years and so the next day he comes home from work and he has a, a bouquet of flowers in his hands and he goes oh hey here's some flowers you don't have to divorce me anymore and she goes what are you talking about the only reason you even got me the freaking flowers is because i asked for them in the first place i was complaining that's what nasa's done yeah. with the pictures you know you you don't wait 43 years between shots you don't and i understand they were scared for you know they didn't want to get caught faking it but they don't really nasa unfortunately they don't have a lot of excuses you can ask them that question but they're going to give you mostly dead air because there, there's some certain questions they can't answer like like the van allen belts you know what shielding did you use to get the yeah. all the americans to the moon and back six times yeah. what, what shielding yeah. did you use when and they don't have it uh, okay uh, are the van allen radiation belts deadly and they won't answer that either. There's, that's why we're we're winning, <laughs> because they they just can't respond. You, they have no one. Everyone wants to have. They're just trying to ignore it. At this point, they're and trying to blow it same, off and hoping we uh, go away. But at the same time, uh, cause I got it. You know, I've got it. Cause a lot of times when you come onto the show, people always go crazy in the comments and say, "Why didn't you ask Mark this or why didn't you ask Mark that?" Oh, okay. Why don't? The flat earth side have no hardcore evidence because I mean the only thing I could say, and this is coming from um, a commenter on the last the last podcast episode we did, yeah, that either side can't win until somebody goes up there, looks down, and brings back the proof. I mean well, these that... have the resources. I mean yep. the flat earth side we don't. These people have the resources and ultimately know the truth. Yeah, but the flat earth side, I mean it, it's just like a almost like uh, um i don't want to use the word conspiracy but almost like well they ain't never going to say what it is whether it's whether the truth so we can always go off the back of them not giving us the truth oh yeah of. yeah yeah you're absolutely right in fact joe rogan the uh the actor turned podcaster over in the united states that was his big thing recently which is and i don't i i get where he's coming with this where he, he's going well he goes you show me a picture of the flat earth and i've heard this from other people but he's really real on it. he goes he goes until you show me a picture of the flat earth then you don't have any proof and i'm going my my immediate response is dude who's gonna take that picture you know who, who's gonna who exactly is going to take the picture of the flat earth the the space has been locked down the united states military controls space and you can say, well, no, there's Europeans and the Chinese. And, oh, yeah, but NASA was the one that blueprinted. The point is military control space. The uh, 95% of any people, in fact, 98% of any people they've ever said that have gone to space have been military. If the, the average civilian population, what you're just saying, don't have access to space, there's no way the Flat Earth can absolutely prove it. But at the same time, we don't really have to because when I tr again, I've said this before on other things I treat it like a court case which is we go in we don't have to prove the flat earth because the burden of proof is still on the globe all we have to do is prove reasonable doubt and we have that for days we can prove reasonable doubt in as little as five minutes and we can keep going on forever and when you can when you have that power to do that then people look sideways at the globe and, and uh, I'll use the the boxing analogy because everybody on the globe side at least you know, when they first start out they say well glo the globe can shut down the flat earth in two seconds I'm going okay fine that's like a boxer going in and should be able to knock a guy out two minutes into the first round and if he doesn't then what because he has it right the, so he goes in against you know the, this other guy and it kind of turns into the Rocky scenario where Okay, first round goes by, that guy's still standing. Why haven't you knocked him out yet, dude? That's flat earth. You should be able to knock him out. Second round, still going. Third round. After a while, you're not looking at the flat earth. You're looking at both sides differently. One, you're looking at the flat earth going, wow, this flat earth is no joke. The second thing, though, is you're looking at the globe going, wait, wait, wait a minute. You're the overwhelming favorite. You're the defending title. You, you've had 500 years worth of, of evidence you should have built up. Why is this thing still happening? 
um, one of your fellow countrymen, and I can't remember, he was like a, a, a sort of an athletic parkour guy, vegan guy. He was on a British show, and he quoted it quite well where he said, you know, you look on the NASA side of things, and the evidence that they show you is pretty thin. You know, even objectively, it's thin. There just is not a lot there. So the burden of proof is not on flat Earth. Never has been. You know, for, because because this is fairly new. We've we've done all this. What you know, this interview and all the interviews I've done and all the podcasts and all the other fun stuff we've done. We've done that in less than two years, eighteen months, really, if you want to be more accurate. Done that in eighteen months. We're undoing 500 years of science in 18 months. How is that even possible if it, there isn't some sort of truth to it? Uh, tell, me, tell me how it's resonating with people, especially with women, by the way. Women are natural BS detectors. How is that happening? You know, how, how, is, you know, how, are, how are celebrities coming forward? How is this thing getting as much traction as it is if it's completely ridiculous? Uh, and that's because it rings true. People are suckers for the truth. Sorry, that's the end of my little... Right. I mean, it's crazy because it can, it is something that, it is something that can create a big, a big debate. I mean, I've had many a um, conversation with people who had nothing to do with Flat Earth, but just off the back of um, uh, conversating with yourself and just uh, following that, that same um, Instagram page and watching Flat Earth clues and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just find myself saying, it's hard, man. It's really hard because... There's a lot of valid points on the flat earth side. Like there's yeah. so much questions that like you're saying to yourself, well, how, how is it that, how is it that we have no concrete evidence? Like you just said, this yeah. thing, they ain't able to shut this thing down. They're able to come forth and say, look, well, with the technology in 2017, there you go. That's a, that's an image or even a live feed or something like that. Oh, like yeah. Yeah. What, you watch the film live. Okay, do you know mm -hmm. when the live feed when it's showing um it yeah. shows the live feed of Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The ISS live feed going over the yeah, I've seen it. And I'm just thinking, I mean, they would do something like that. So it is it, it is something that you have to take notice of. Definitely. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean the, look, the live feeds the, the live feeds of the exterior live feeds are not bad, but our special effects technology has gotten so good that that can be faked in two seconds. You know, I, I quote the movie Gravity with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. Look, you could intersplice the the stuff that's not close-ups in that movie into just about any NASA shot, and no one would question it. They would say, oh, yeah, that's NASA footage if you took it out of that movie and, and put it into NASA. But the live stuff, that's where the interior stuff, like what we were talking about earlier, where the if you want to see some some interesting stuff go to a youtube channel called ditrh and look at the videos he's been posting because we've been analyzing a lot of the interior international space station stuff where there was a a, a thing recently where two astronauts were talking supposedly <laughs> live yeah. to some students in the united states out over in idaho as a matter of fact and one of them and, and what, what it happens is, if you're doing green screen, what it turns into is, you guys do the same thing over your side, it's kind of like the weatherman. You know, the weatherman's pointing at the screen behind him, but there's nothing there. You, you know, he's, he's looking at a monitor in front of him, and he's saying, oh, okay, well, there's going to be clouds over here, and there's rain over here, but there's literally, if you go to the set, there's nothing behind him. It's a green screen. The only reason he can even move his hand around and he knows where to point is he's looking at a monitor in front of him next to the camera. And that appears to be what had happened with these astronauts. These astronauts, what happened was, I think one of the guys was supposed to leave his hat in midair in a certain point, and the other astronaut was supposed to grab that hat and then put it off to the side, off to his right. The problem was, is that the astronaut the guy never put the hat in the right place, but the other astronaut grabbed it anyway and put it over to the right. But the thing was, he didn't grab anything. He, he was grabbing air. There was nothing there. So what? why did he put something over to the side that wasn't there? It was the weirdest thing I've seen when it comes to the ISS. He was basically grabbing, and he knew he screwed up. And so the question is, did the green screen screw up? Did the monitors screw up? The astronauts were caught, and this is why you can't do live feeds from space why most people don't do live television why everything is pre-recorded you make mistakes and that was a huge one now does that prove flat earth no no it doesn't prove flat earth does it 
put in question yeah just about anything that people say that's on the iss oh yeah you bet it does because if they're doing green screen on that scene then what's real what 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 is is anything legit up there that they're putting up there are they or is there anybody up there at all no there's nobody up there there never was it's just that they they had to they had to fake it you've got to create the illusion of space so that people and it's got to be from a military standpoint so the so the subcontractors and the private sector don't go up there and you're saying well no no there's private there's private sectors spacex is going to go there next year no really you, you think that's going to happen spacex is going to send people around the moon two tourists next year in a don't booster forget, in, don't in a forget rocket Branson. oh no no virgin galactic <laughs> he's not yeah. going anywhere. he's not going anywhere <laughs> He, the the two the two companies, Virgin Galactic and SpaceX. Virgin Galactic hasn't done anything in a while. SpaceX supposedly is the new folk. is the new hero. They they're uh, they're going to use a Falcon. I'll give you guys the specs. They're going to supposedly use a Falcon booster rocket, never been tested. They're going to use a capsule we've never even seen. We do not know the names of the astronauts that are going. We do not know the name of the pilots that are going. We don't have a mission date, but they say, oh, yeah, we're going to do this next year. Even though NASA has said very recently the, in documentaries that, oh, yeah, we the reason why we can't go to the moon is that there's just not enough money. Can't be done. And then SpaceX comes out and says, oh, yeah, we're going to take tourists around the moon for pennies on the dollar. Like, what are you talking about? How are you going to get past the Van, how are you getting past the Van Allen belts? The, how are you going to pull that off? What shield are you going to use there? How, and, and, of course, the biggest the biggest question with that is, Here's the difference between then and now. Nowadays, there are 4K cameras are everywhere. You buy a box of cereal, there's a 4K camera in it, right? And there should be 4K cameras all over whatever rocket SpaceX is going up. How are you not going to show that footage? Because you can't. You know, remember, there's never been a piece of footage with a camera running that leaves the pad and leaves Earth orbit. And this never happened. And in fact, SpaceX is going to break so many NASA rules. The only thing I can think of is either it's going to just, they're, they're going to have to have some sort of system failure to where it turns into Apollo 13 and they're going around the moon and they say, oh, well, hopefully we can get them back. And oh, yeah, all our external cameras aren't working. Or they're just going to blow it up on the pad and kill everybody. One of the two things. It's, they, they can't, this mission will not happen. You can't fake it. This is something I've said since day one which is if some government pr operation came to me and said, Mark, you're the best director in Hollywood. Here's a dump truck full of money. We want you to fake the Mars mission. I would laugh at them and go and have a drink because there's no way I could fake it. You can't fake something that big, not, not, not in real time. And this, so how are they going to do the moon? How, how is a private company going to do the moon? Never going to happen. So Mark, if... I want to paint. I want to paint a picture. Please don't laugh when I when I paint this picture. Okay. Now, you've built up a a, a good following online. Yeah. You've built up a good following online. A lot of people listen to you and and liaise with you. Thanks. Now, Virgin Galactic or Project X one the two come to you and say, Mark Sargent. Oh, I'd absolutely go. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm gonna say. You know what I'm gonna say. What? They say, yeah. we want to take you up there. For free, we yeah. just want you to look and come back and tell the world the truth. Are you going? Oh, absolutely, I'd go. But it's never, it's never going to happen. They would, they would sit me down. And here's, I'll, I'll tell you the real story. So the public, that's what they'd show the public. They'd say, "We're going to take Mark Sargent up there." Blah blah blah, right? And then they would take me into a room, and they'd put a non-disclosure agreement in front of me, and they say, "Okay, here's a standard non-disclosure agreement. It says that you're going to do exactly what we say." You're going to say exactly what we say, and you're going to report back. You do anything else, we're going to bring you up on high treason. There will be no trial, and you will disappear, and we will remove every little, you know, your, your channel is there. Everything, anything on the internet, they'll just be memories of you. It'll just be channels like, what happened to Mark Sargent? <laughs> that'll, that'll, that'll be the threat. And at that point, I will, you know, I have to make a choice. I would say, okay, well, I'm going to back down on my own volition. Then they'd say, okay, here's a non-disclosure agreement saying this meeting never happened. And then I, you know, then we have to figure out what happens then. But no, the, the, it can't be done because it hasn't been done. There's so many things missing from NASA, from the space agencies, that there is no doubt in my mind, absolutely none, that they're faking it, that you can't, at the very least, you cannot go up there. Now, the exact reason why you can't go up there may vary. 
you know, what, whatever this world looks like, which is why I love the community. At the very least, we know it's not a globe. Because if it was a globe, you'd just take a whole bunch of pictures early and you'd keep a running 4K stream going at all times that's showing it's a globe. At the very least, we know it's not that. How exactly flat it is, or what it, you know, is there a dome? Is there not a dome? Are there other continents? You know, is this just one giant reality show like the Truman Show? We don't know exactly. But the, the you know, putting me up into space, pff, never going to happen. They, they will never offer that to anybody. It's, uh, they can't, they can't take the chance. They can't, they can't even take the chance in offering it to something, not just me, but other people in the community. I suppose they could, they could, go ahead. No, continue for, continue for talk about Oh, well, the, I mean, they, they suppose they, they might be able to find somebody to buy, to buy off. But even if you bought somebody off, let's say I would, let's say I did go up there, right? Or, or let's say they, they, they sent me or they, they said, okay. We're gonna fake it. What eventually, whoever's on the other side, when I come back, when I, you know, wherever they take me, I have to have pictures. I, it's not like I can just come back and have a press conference and say, "Yep, I went up there. The Earth is a globe." Good night, everybody. I, there's no way they can do that. That I've got to have. You know, nowadays people would say, "Okay, not only do we want video, it's not just pictures anymore. Video, but they want the original video and they want to have it to, to be able to analyze it." And you know, freely and run it past people that, that are really good with video. And where's that going to come from? Because we've ne we haven't even seen a piece of video that can't be torn apart yet. Anyway, that's mine. <laughs> that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Um, Virgin Galactic. Now they have. Uh, I'm sure they've they've mentioned that they're launching um, their first. Oh, okay. pa passenger flight up to to circle the moon. I think in, was it twenty twenty? Is it or something? No, no, no. It's SpaceX. Virgin Galactic's not doing anything. Is that the one when they're going to basically take them up and then they're basically going to be in free fall? They take them up in a, in, a, in a rocket and then there's a oh well. There's Virgin a... Galactic says they're going to do some free fall stuff, but they're not going to the moon. Virgin Galactic is very, very limited to what they're even trying. In fact, the videos that I've seen on Virgin Galactic, they barely even get up to spy plane altitude. And then, you know, with a, it's just a it's just as a glorified private jet in, with rockets instead of jets and with a whole bunch of windows on them. That's all. Virgin Galactic is not doing jack. Seriously, they're not doing anything. SpaceX, on the other hand, they're the ones that are making all the noise. They literally say that by this time next year, they're going to circle two people around the moon, which has never been done since 1972. So, even if you believe mainstream, hasn't even been attempted yeah. since 1972. And, and if you had, if you were a billionaire, right? If you had a couple hundred million dollars to throw around, or whatever they're paying, let's say it's 10 million bucks. Who cares, right? For for guys like that, are you really going to risk it all on a private company? Seriously, you're gonna you're gonna take that ride? I mean, you got to remember that if you're if you're that rich, you got a lot to lose. You got to have a lot of faith in your project. If I was spending whatever they're charging, let's say it's ten million dollars, I want to see every nut and bolt and rivet, and I'd want to know everything about the pilots. I want to know everything about the systems, and I'd still would be I wouldn't probably put a lot of faith in that. But we'll see. I'm not. And that. I out of those two organizations, um, which one of them had uh, made an offer to William Shatner? To oh, be on... I don't know. I don't know, but that reminds, he... that reminds me of there's another challenge that's going on this year, which a lot of people don't even know that it's happening. It's the uh, Google X Space Challenge, which they put they, they, $20 million, first prize, like $20 million is a lot of money for a space program, to the first group that can send a probe to the moon and beam back images, literally. And there's five companies that are vying for this right now. One in the United States, one in Israel, one in Japan, one in India, and I think one in Europe, the, the, the European agency. And five companies and it's, and the, and but the thing is it has to be done before the end of this year and it's so they're building stuff right now i'm going really how are you going to pull that off what you're really going to send a probe to the moon and being beam back pictures yeah 
Well, out of those, I'll make a prediction right now. Out of those five companies that are going to launch rockets, two of them are going to blow up on the pad or, or blow up before they even leave the atmosphere. One of them will die on its way to the moon. Again, if you believe the story, two will land on the moon, but only one will work. One will you know, drop its probe and, and one will be in bad pictures and the pictures will be so fuzzy. They'll win the $20 million and uh, it may be American. It may not. I'm not sure. But yeah, check that up if you get a chance. The Google X Space Challenge is brilliant. Um, did that start what uh, at the start of 2017, or is this a? Oh no, yeah. So I... it has to be finished in the next seven months. You have to launch before the end of 2017. It's happening right now. And you know, again, I I don't know how they're going to pull it off. But they'll you you wait. The mainstream media will cover this. They they will bring this up before the end of the year because everyone's you know delaying it. They're not going to launch during the summer. The launch during the fall, probably around the same time in the conference. Mm -hmm. That'd be good timing. Mean, that would uh, that, that would, would create be. some excellent publicity. That would. I know, <laughs> right? I, I I'm hoping we can hype that up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're winding now now um, for the broadcast. So if you can um, give out some more information, reference this uh, this conference, and um, you know some more information details how people what what websites people go to etc um sure yes yeah. what, what kind of prices are we talking for for average um entrance oh entrance is actually not that much uh i think it's a hundred even if you waited till the conference itself if you didn't pre-buy i think it's maybe 150 bucks american for two okay. days that's not that's not terrible i mean look the hotel is going to cost you more than that for mm -hmm. you know a hotel i think it's like a hundred something bucks a night uh, and if you're flying, although it's 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 good that it's going to be in the middle of the East Coast, because that means a lot of people on the East Coast that that maybe wouldn't have done it if it was out in say California, they're going to drive. There's a lot of people that are going to drive to this thing, and it's going to be. If you guys want to check out all the details on it, it's being it's being put on by Robbie Davidson from a channel called Celebrate Truth, and Brian Mullen who's done a whole bunch of different videos. Uh, he's a structural engineer. And just a whole bunch of people that are, that are going to be presenting. I'm not going to list them all because if I forget any, they'll, I'll get yelled at. But the website is called FE, as in Flat Earth, FE2017.com. And you can register through it. I recommend that you get the hotel through it as well because I think the closest hotel to it is, I think, like three miles away. And I know you could probably take a cab, but you, you probably want to be in the same hotel with everybody else because I don't think anyone's going to sleep for two days. I know I'm not going to get a lot of sleep. And it's real exciting. I'm hyping. I'm, I do a promo on my channel every Saturday, even though they didn't ask me to because I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to go. I don't, I don't think anything is going to keep me from it. And it's going to be neat because there's going to be, uh, I, I, I would expect a lot of media attention. And if this thing keeps building the way it, it does, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll get some whatever type celebrities that show up at this thing you know some some may be doing it for just kind of a circus sideshow you know are you because media that show up are still going to think when they go to this thing that people are going to be wearing literally tin hats and costumes and all sorts of crazy stuff it's like look they're just normal people i mean it's not going to be any different than the podcast we put on so very excited definitely definitely well mark sergeant as always it's a pleasure yeah yeah, thank you guys for having me. And what time is it over there in the UK? Uh, nine quarter past nine now. Oh yeah, yeah you guys are up too late. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, uh, we're definitely catching up with you again in the future. Yeah, yeah, def we'll definitely catch up with me if you can before the conference because I'm, who knows what's going to happen between now and then. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. And I think after the conference as well will be a good oh, idea yeah. to, to 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 catch up as well. But yeah, we'll definitely make that plan. Cool. Excellent. Thanks so much, Mark. Enjoy um, your night, your day. Um, shalom, balance, paradise, siblings. Um, and we'll be back again. All right. Thanks, guys.